too much of a good thing can definitely be a bad thing, especially when it comes to saltwater aquariums. And nitrates are no exception to this rule. So let's talk about it. And without digging too far into the biochemistry of everything, let's just say that nitrates are the end result of the second phase of the nitrogen cycle. Ammonia is created in the tank by various means. It is then converted into nitrites and then converted into nitrates by bacteria that are found within our ecosystems. This comes around as a result of the breakdown of organic material from fish waste and fish food that is uneaten in the aquarium or other things that end up decaying in the system and then go through this conversion process. We're always trying to strike a balance within our saltwater aquariums, especially if they are reef aquariums and too little nitrates can be just as big of a problem as too much. But more often is the case for most people, we end up with an excess of nitrates and we're trying to figure out what we need to do to bring them down. And you might ask yourself, why are we worried about nitrates being too high in the first place? Well, they can cause you a whole bunch of issues with your system which include some of the following, but definitely are not limited to just these problems. You might find that you end up with an excess of algae in the tank, like green hair algae, or maybe even cyanobacteria that you just can't get rid of. It could also immunocompromise your fish if they're in a situation of too high nitrates for too long, end up shortening their lifespan and causing them additional problems. It could also cause bacterial blooms in your tank, which can strip the oxygen out of the tank, making more problems for your fish and make the tank cloudy and just be a general problem for you in the aquarium. It can also affect your corals, especially their coloration by turning them a little bit darker or more dull or even brown. And none of this is what we want. So what level of nitrates do we need to try to attain in our aquariums? Well, the first part of this process is proper testing your aquarium to make sure you know where the level is at, like this. So in general, if you have a fish only tank, you're not really concerned about nitrates until they get above 20 and really above 40 ppm. Anything above 40 is definitely bad. You don't want your fish in that environment for any length of time. It is going to cause them problems in the long term. But for a fish only system, anywhere upwards of 20, you're going to be okay. Personally, I wouldn't run mine that high. I would try to keep it down around five, but it's not going to hurt the fish if it gets up a little bit higher. Now with a coral system, this is very different and it even matters what coral you're going to be keeping in your tank. If you want a tank with softies and zoanthids and pallies and like Duncans and LPS and stuff, you can keep your nitrates a little bit higher up in the 10 to 15 range. This is going to be fine. The corals are going to be fine. It's not going to hurt anything and everything's going to look good. But if your end goal is an SPS tank with small polyp stonies, you know, those corals that look like bushes and they're, you know, fuzzy sticks, as we call them, those guys really don't like nitrates way high. They tend to prefer tanks that have nitrates down around five or maybe even a little less. Full disclaimer, yes, if you go on the internet, you will find people who can tell you that they kept their SPS reef tank at 40 ppm nitrate and phosphates at 2.0. It can happen. This is not what I would recommend as a general guideline. Usually, those tanks are very old systems, packed full of corals, and the corals are using up most of those nitrates that are being produced all the time. I would not recommend anybody trying to get started or maintaining a new tank to keep your nitrates over about five to 10 ppm and make sure that they're in balance with all of the rest of the stuff in the tank. And if you need help with that, I have a video at the end of this one that you'll need to watch to understand what's going on there. Now, this is definitely not an exhaustive list of all the things that can cause excess nitrates in your tank, but some of the problems are overfeeding your aquarium, lack of biological filtration, and lack of mechanical filtration in the tank to export the nutrients that we're adding into the system. So if our nitrates are already over the level where we want to keep them in our tank, what can we do about it to bring them down? By far, 
the absolute best way that you can lower nitrates in your aquarium is simply by doing water changes with new salt water. And this is based on a percentage type of scale. If your nitrates are just, let's say, at 20 and you want to bring them down to 10, you're going to have to change 50% of the water in the aquarium to do that. But that could swing other parameters too quickly, and that may not be what you want to do with a reef tank. Now, in a fish-only tank, absolutely, 50% water change, I'm not even worried about it. But in a tank with corals, that could change the alkalinity and other things too fast. So doing regular weekly 10% water changes are going to help you control your nitrates and not let them get out of hand. But in the instance that something really bad happens and potentially catastrophic, you can do whatever percent change you need to drop them back into place. Just be aware that it might piss your corals off for a little while until things become stable again. Another thing that we can do is add equipment to our tank, and there's lots of things that we could add to help control the nitrate production in our aquariums. Protein skimmers are one of the best. We can hook those things up. They removed some of the dissolved organics directly from the water, and when they do that, they take it completely out of the water column, so it's not able to break back down into other forms of ammonia and organics and further increase the nitrates. And that's kind of the key thing here. Anything that we're going to do to try to lower the nitrates, we need to export those nutrients completely from the tank. Something like filter socks can definitely help catch detritus and they help remove things from the aquarium. But if we're not cleaning them weekly, if we let those filter socks sit in the tank past the seven day mark, the things that they have caught are going to start breaking back down into nutrients and creating what we're trying to remove. So if you're going to use something like filter socks or filter pads or filter floss, any sort of a mechanical filtration media in your aquarium, you're going to want to be rinsing that in old salt water weekly when you do your water changes, or you're going to want to be changing those things out once every week. Don't let them go two or three weeks or a month unless you're trying to build some nitrates. But that's a whole other video. And what I just mentioned kind of goes along with increasing your filtration. If you have a nitrate problem in your aquarium, adding things that are going to remove the stuff that can become nitrates is the way forward. Now, there is a very popular filtration system out there in the world, and I'm talking about canister filters here. And these things, I have a love-hate relationship with these. They can be a very good thing to use and they're a fairly inexpensive option for somebody wanting to get into the hobby and start learning how things work and all that. But just like the filter socks or other filter media, if you don't clean that canister filter weekly and it's set up with filter floss and pads and different medias and things like that in there, it can become a nutrient factory. All of that stuff that it traps after the week begins to break down, just like I was mentioning before, and it contributes to the problem. But for some reason, filter canisters seem to exacerbate this in wild ways. And recently, I've spoken to several people who had nitrates over 100 ppm in their tank, and they hadn't cleaned their canister filter in like two or three or four months. And that was the cause. They cleaned it out things started progressing. So if you're going to use a canister filter, make sure that you're doing that weekly maintenance on that thing. And I don't mean just take it out, rinse the stuff off and put it back. I mean, clean it, remove it from the system, disassemble it, clean it, rinse all the filter media and old salt water from the water change or even new salt water if you want to. Pro tip, do not ever rinse this stuff in chlorinated tap water or anything like that. That will instantly kill the bacterial biome that's on these filter medias. But th that's a little bit of an advanced topic, but just use salt water, okay? Either old or new. And then reassemble your canister filter back together and reinstall it back on the tank. Doing that is gonna make sure it doesn't become a problem and it remains part of the solution. Now, the next thing that I'm going to talk about gets into a little bit more of advanced reef keeping, or really maybe intermediate reef keeping, and this is algae reactors. It 
is a little bit more involved than just simply sticking some macroalgae in somewhere into your tank and hoping that it grows. But adding chetomorpha algae into a refugium section of your sump or into a, a fuge tank or anything next to your main display and flowing the water through there with a good strong light, a macroalgae tank set up nearby or even in your tank is a good idea. But these things, they do affect the nitrates, but they may not affect it as much as you would want, but they can definitely help consume that stuff. And again, the point here is that you're going to grow this algae and then you're going to harvest it and take it out of the system, thereby removing those dissolved organics and nitrates and phosphates from the system completely. Another thing that we have at our disposal is something called a sulfur denitrator. I really wouldn't recommend this for a beginner, but if you want to look into it, there's no reason you shouldn't. But this is a device that has some sulfur media in it and through its processes and things that it does, it consumes the nitrates in the aquarium to break down the sulfur media that's inside the reactor. These can get very technical. Now, they are extremely effective, but I wouldn't recommend it for a beginner. That's more of a late intermediate sort of getting toward the advanced stage kind of solution, but they work really well. So we have a couple of tips on how we can lower nitrates and there are other things that you can do. There's products you can get, liquid that you can dose to the tank and it says that it'll reduce nitrates. One of the other important things you can do is make sure you have a good solid bacterial biome. There is a zone in the aquarium that people don't talk about much when we talk about the nitrogen cycle that actually takes the nitrates and breaks them down into nitrogen gas. And that happens in the deep areas of the sand bed or within the middle of the rocks in anaerobic zones where the bacteria have to use those nitrates for fuel and all that for that conversion. Now, this is not something that I would recommend a beginner immediately try to set up in their tank because this takes a while for these zones to be populated in the aquarium, but it does happen in your rocks and in your sand. And running something like a deep sand bed in a refugium is something that we used to do all the time. You really don't see it too much anymore. And I really don't know why, because they work very well, but it's not an instant solution. That's more of that building your ecosystem over time kind of situation, but it's just something I thought I would mention. So now we know a little bit about how to bring nitrates down in the aquarium. What can we do to prevent them ever building in the first place? Water changes. I can't stress this enough. And I see people all the time recommending people that you don't have to do water changes anymore. It's based on your tank's specific situation. If your nitrates are building week to week and you do your water change and it drops them down to 10 and the next week you test before your water change and they're at 25 and you do the water change and it drops them down and they continue building, you absolutely need to be doing weekly water changes to maintain and control those levels. But if you test your tank and it's at 10 and you do your water change, next week you test the tank and it's at 8, Maybe skip that water change. Maybe don't do that one, but it's all a balance. You have to keep the trace elements and all of that in mind and make sure that everything is on an even keel and stable where it needs to be. Proper feeding practices for your tank are one of the things that can help you keep your nitrates at a lower level. Overfeeding the tank is definitely a problem. So not doing that is going to prevent these things from being created in the first place. Only feed your fish enough for what they can eat in one to two minutes or so. And if they want a little bit more after that, you can give them a little more than that. Prime example, I was helping somebody out the other day. They had very high nitrates on their system. We were trying to figure out what was going on. It was a 20 gallon cube tank and they were feeding two clownfish, three cubes of mysis every day. And I'm like, oh my gosh, man, that's absolutely the problem. You're just feeding the tank too much. So we corrected that issue and two or three weeks passed, the nitrates started to come down with the water changes, everything was looking good. So definitely that's a problem and can prevent excess nitrates as long as you feed the tank correctly. Oh, and by the way, another pro tip, corals 
do not need all of this crazy stuff that we see out there on the market for their normal processes. They need light and dissolved organics in the water to survive. They do not need all these neon green additives that we put in the tank and reef roids and all of this other stuff. Now, those are good products and that's not what I'm saying. All I'm saying is if you're adding something like that to your tank every day or every other day, that could also be potentially causing excess nutrients in your aquarium. Bring that stuff way back to once a week or maybe even once every 10 days if you see good results using it with your tank and your tank's fairly new and not completely full of corals. You see how all this starts to roll in together? Everything has to be considered as a whole system. One more thing that we can do to prevent excessive nitrates in our system is make sure that bacterial biome is where it needs to be. Now, there are some products that you can get, red non-sulfur bacteria, something like Microbe Lift, uh, what's it called? Special Blend, that one. That has anaerobic bacteria in it and other bacteria whose specific purpose is to use decaying detritus and uh, like dead zones in the aquarium for their fuel and energy sources. So they, they basically consume this stuff that's going to become nitrates later and process it out of the tank and whatever, whatever. Don't go crazy with these things. It's just part of a solution to building a healthy bacterial biome. If for some reason you think yours might be lacking a little bit, you can add some of these bacteria. Then there's a bunch of different types other than that one that I just mentioned, but you can add these to the tank to help boost that bacterial biome just a little bit and help control your nutrients even just a little bit more. And hey, if this is the kind of information that you're looking for with your saltwater aquariums, be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and drop a comment below and let me know where your nitrates are and what you're doing to try to control them. Now that we know why we get nitrates, how to bring them down, and what to do to prevent them, you need to understand how the whole system works together to make sure that your corals and fish and everything are doing what they're supposed to do. And that video right there on the screen is going to explain that in a great amount of detail. And I think you'll enjoy it.